I'm here with Laura Story and her new book, So Long Normal. And you've now been an established author. Is this book number three? I don't know if you can really call me a... St- I would say. <laughs> established. <laughs> I don't know if other people would refer to me as an established yes. author. Now, I'll tell you, I learned pretty early on with writing books. I think I thought that authors were people that had like mastered these truths that they'd like you to impart to that. other You know, and some people might be... For me, it's always been, it was kind of an unexpected thing for me to even write books, but it's just like inviting people along as I'm learning, as I'm on the journey. And so that's a lot of my books, they have a ton of scripture, just the Mm -hmm. things I'm learning from God's word right now, a ton of very real stories about ways that I am you know, some days winning, most days <laughs> <laughs> struggling, <laughs> struggling and failing. Yeah. You know, but but we learn through all of it, don't we? Yes, and I I love that you're that honest with us because I mean the whole world got to learn about you through your song "Blessings," which yeah. you're a songwriter by nature. That's what you do. You're an artist, but you get so few words to describe yes. your life in a yes. song. And I'm grateful that we get more words with you because you are vulnerable in your music, but you're vulnerable in your books. And the fact that you would even just come out and say like normal wasn't really an option for us from the giddy up is refreshing Uh and would you unpack that story of the very beginning of your marriage and your life to your husband immediately God was like you're not gonna have a normal story exactly will you tell us about that with your husband so within our first two years of marriage Martin was diagnosed with a brain tumor and that is you know we certainly did not see that coming but even in the midst of that I think part of us thought okay We're going to get this tumor removed, we're going to get all that fixed, and we're going to get back onto the normal life that we had planned. And that didn't even really happen Mm -hmm. because after, you know, three months in the hospital and then a year of of recovery, we just realized that it was a much, um, I'd say, more permanent change than what we realized. And Mm -hmm. Martin lives to this day with a brain injury. So he has a vision deficit and a memory deficit. That and it makes everything. Yeah. So it makes life uh, mm-hmm. challenging as, you know, just for us as individuals and us as a family, but mm-hmm. it's a challenge also with our faith. Yeah. Because I think to, on some level we all expect, okay, I'm going to trust God with my life. I'm going to do all this stuff, you know, mm-hmm. try my best to, to be the, you know, the best follower of Christ that I can. Yes. And ultimately it's just going to kind of work out, uh, which has not really been our experience, Mm -hmm. even though uh, we have a really sweet life and we've seen God shine in ways through the brokenness uh, that, that we're very thankful for. Yeah, and I think that's what we need to illuminate. That's why this book is perfectly timed. Did you write most of it in 2020 when things got like crazy for all of us or was it already being built well, and then the world yeah. fell apart. And as you say, you know, things that God been, had been teaching me for a while, but it was definitely during <laughs> during the pan, pandemic, mm-hmm. quarantine, and everything, music, like touring was speaking, all of that was just gone. And we just yeah. had this blank year of, okay, I don't know. Stuck. And I think, I think a lot of us, like we tried to make plans like even based on like the plans were dumped. Okay, we're gonna make more plans. Oh, those are dumped now. <laughs> so I finally came to a point of saying, okay, God, if you're allowing this amount of disruption in our lives, mm-hmm. I know you're at work, but just show me, like show me what you're up to. just a little glimpse of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And the neat thing is, as I turned to His Word, one thing I began to see story after story, which is basically what is mm-hmm. all in this book. Story after story, you see God calling his children to walk on this faith journey, like to embark upon this faith adventure, which is super exciting. And everyone wants that. But Mm -hmm. the common theme that I kept seeing is him calling, beginning that journey by calling them away from what's comfortable and what's familiar, even what's expected. We hate that, don't we? But absolutely, it's like, it's, it's written in his word. That's just the way it happens. Yeah, and we yeah. sense it in our own lives. Yeah. So what do you do with that uncomfortableness of going, I, I'm not supposed to be comfortable all the time. I mean, we don't, yeah. we don't really have a choice. Like life is just hard. Mm-hmm. But how do you deal with that desire for safety and comfort? And God says, that's not where I do my best work. Exactly. Well, I, I love that you say that, you know, because change is inevitable. Yeah. And, and once we just kind of acknowledge, okay, I can't put my hope in 
in set circumstances yeah. or even in even the best relationships. We mm -hmm. can't place our hope there. Uh, one one story that I, you know that I talk about, and I, and I go through a ton of Bible stories, but one of mm -hmm. one of my most favorite is uh, you see the Israelites. They're wandering in the wilderness, and like everything normal is just <laughs> way like a few a few dozen years past, you mm -hmm. know. And you even see them even romanticizing their time in Egypt. They're and saying slavery. things like, I, oh, I, I, miss, I wish we were back in Egypt. It's like, you should go back into slavery? And you see them almost choosing uh, a, a, a bad past mm -hmm. just because it was a known past yes. over this unknown future. We can relate to that more than I think we want to. Yeah, admit. yeah. But one of the things I love, I'm kind of towards the end of this wilderness wandering, uh, Moses writes Psalm 90 where he says, you, O Lord, are a dwelling place. Mm. And this picture of, okay, no, 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 it's not where we've, we're from, it's not where we are, it's not even where we're going, even though where they were going was good, yeah. is that God has been our sturdiness. And so trying mm. to figure out what does it mean for us to say in the midst of transition, like, I don't have to have the answer to my question, or I don't have to have the answer to that prayer in order to feel at peace or to feel secure mm -hmm. because the Lord is my security. The Lord is my dwelling place. That's so encouraging because if we know the Lord, that means we are never without security. Absolutely. Never, no matter yeah. what happens. Yeah. And we just have to be able to take hold of that. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you say that's very similar in the book is when life becomes shaky, we don't have to be shaken. We yes. can be steadfast in a world that's beyond our control. Can we talk about the process to get there? Because uh. you talk about there's five things we have to say so long to, which yes. is kind of the painful part. I was just reading today about like your so long security because least favorite, <laughs> least favorite thing to say goodbye yes. to. Don't yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So long identity, so long self. Um, and then this bravery of taking on a new normal. But yeah. what does it look like to say goodbye to things that we are, our sin nature says we should hold on to? Yeah. And it's not even, I don't want anyone to ever feel bad about, um, you know, grieving the loss of something yeah. or like when something changes, you know, it's a normal. new job, it's, it's normal. And a lot of times I feel like as, as believers, we don't really grieve well. We don't lament, which you know, the Bible oh. talks so much. It like literally even gives us scripts and says, hey, it's okay to have a really tough time with change. And sit in that. Yeah. I really appreciate that because I do think that sometimes we think it's like not holy. Like we're supposed to uh -huh. rejoice in all things. So we're like... Yeah. I'm not that upset about that, even though we are. I cried today, you know. Yeah. I'll hey. cry again after this. <laughs> and that is okay. Yeah. Yeah, because, and you know, now that you brought it up, you open the door. Girl, Change. Yeah. Like, you mm -hmm. want to see your your sweet child that yeah. you dropped out of preschool. You want them to grow up. Yeah. You want them to, to go to school and all that. It needs to change, but I don't want to. <laughs> I know, but it's, yeah, it's so tough. Yeah. But I think that kind of the point of the book and, and the point of the truth that I was finding just all through scripture mm -hmm. is that we don't have to fear an unknown future because we have a known God, yeah. a God who reveals himself, reveals his character th through the scriptures, reveals, mm -hmm. gives us story after story mm -hmm. of him calling us out of familiar things and leading us to better things. We have a God who, like, mm -hmm. you know, Paul, I love how he says in, in a, uh, Ephesians, he says, you know, a God who does exceedingly more mm. than we can think or ask. So if we have a God that's going to do more than we can think, it makes sense that we're not always going to understand the big yeah. picture. Even when that's scary and hard, trusting yeah. that he is a good God. Absolutely. Leading us on to better things. Yeah. So what did that look like for you in 2020 crafting this? And like, what does it feel like and look like in your own home that you're in this season of like, there is no normal here, but we are embracing the unknown. Yeah, and that's, that's a good question. What does it look like for us? Yeah. I can't tell you what remote learning looked like because it really <laughs> wasn't, it wasn't pretty. Let's be I honest. I mean, for no one. It wasn't pretty for anybody. <laughs> well, honestly, here's the thing. In all honesty, yeah. what did it look like? Uh, at first, a lot of anxiety. At first, mm -hmm. a lot of glued to the news glued to social media, figure, okay. What's happening now? What's happening? And what I realized is that I was looking, um, was looking out there when I need mm. to be looking up there. I was looking these, these outlets yeah. that I normally um, look to for information. Yeah. I was allowing them probably a greater voice in my life in formation. Yeah. 
And so what they were forming in me <laughs> was a whole lot of anxiety and yes. fear. We and I finally had, that. okay, we got to shut it down. We got to shut it down. Mm -hmm. I need to look to God's word because this is truth. It's living mm -hmm. and active. It's stable. It is time tested. And the more I began to go to God's word, the more I was able to, I think, process better the information. Nothing wrong with news, social media, any yeah. of that. But I was able to process it better. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you one more thing, and this is as a mom, because we, you know, talking about having kids. Tell me everything. I think <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> okay, I, I don't believe that at all. But with kids, I was thinking about 2020, and I thought, I think our kids will remember more, not so much what happened, but how I responded to what happened. Because like, they are so young. It's those formidable years. Yes, mm -hmm. and they're going to think of 2020 as either the year that mom lost her mind mm -hmm. and was just wringing my hands like, what's mm -hmm. going to happen? i got to turn on the TV to find out what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Or the time that we slowed down, yeah. that we prayed for our nation and our world. That you got together time. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully they remember it as a time that I was at peace even though the world wasn't at peace. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. peace is not, it's not your circumstances lining up the way you want. Peace is a person mm -hmm. that I've always claimed to my kids that I've grounded my life upon. And that you know. Yes. And now we so have like, to cling to him. Now I actually get to live that out. I don't mm -hmm. live it out perfectly. You yeah. can <laughs> you can ask any of my kids how imperfectly I live that out Thank in Thank you for telling us that. Because there could be <laughs> shame-filled moments in this, but instead seeing the opportunity that even still today, we, oh, get, we get to take advantage of that peace in little yes. moments. And it doesn't mean it comes first. Sometimes the anxiety comes yeah. first, and then we recognize, oh, no, wait, there is peace that can be yeah. found. Let me turn. Let me talk to him. Yeah. Let me yeah. ask him Nobody for it. Nobody needs to feel guilty about, about yeah. being fearful. This is these are hard times we're walking through right now. They are. And just acknowledging that and even mm -hmm. like I mentioned just with the scriptures, people who are very honest, you know, in the Psalms about you know, like the brokenness of the world, mm -hmm. we, need, we need to acknowledge it. Yeah. But we don't grieve as people without hope. Mm -hmm. And our hope is found in a person. And we have a greater opportunity maybe than we've ever had to point to that person right now. That's such a good point. And something you did that's a little different with this book that I love is you interviewed people who you say have found their steady. And yes. I loved hearing their perspectives. Even there's a couple that she talks to in the book that is has kids, they're in that child rearing years, and yet they're also taking care of the woman's mom who yes. is, has dementia, I believe, and is yeah. living with them. And I just love that you are saying, here's plenty of circumstances of people who mm -hmm. hear their lives are looking crazy in this season, yeah. but they found they're steady. What made you want to talk to other people oh, like gracious. that for the book? And that family that you mentioned, they're a great example because she shared, you know, just through tears, both her and mm -hmm. her husband sharing through I wish tears. there was a video for all of this girl. Uh, I Well, there there it. is. Like, we have some. <laughs> I don't know how to find them. They're on the internet somewhere. Uh, but yeah, it, you could find the videos. But th it's this. it was the sweetest thing because they were saying, yeah, we could have stayed normal, like manageable. Uh, the two parents, you know, four kids, <laughs> as if that's manageable. I can tell you that's not really manageable. Mm -hmm. But they said, we felt God calling us to somewhere um, that was frightening. Like yeah. w she, she said, I, I didn't know how I was going to be able to take care of the kids and my mom. And honestly, that kind of the end of their story, it was for a season. Their mom, her, her mom got to the point where they did need to put her in assisted living. Mm -hmm. But the mom lived with them for probably a year, year and a half. And they would tell you the greatest impact wasn't the ministry happening to the mom, even though it was substantial. It was teaching the kids, the kids seeing that was what profound. love looks like. Profound. What honoring your parents, what 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 living in the hard, being willing to walk through the hard, mm -hmm. uh, and and that we, you know, as people, they both work at they both work at our church, and they said, are we just going to talk about this Jesus person and how he loves others, or are we going to live it out in front of our kids? That's so encouraging that even when you're walking through a really hard time, you might even think. This is probably the lesson God is going to teach, and it might be a completely different one. And it might not even be for you. Yes. Like, how powerful that it might be for your family. It might be for your kids. Well, I've, I've always thought that our kids aren't going to remember as much what we walk through, but how we walk through what we, what we walk mm -hmm. through. Because yeah. the scriptures talk so much about uh, 
how God uses those trials to develop that character within mm -hmm. us, that yeah. character and endurance and hope, uh, stuff that we want to see in our kids. We want so much to see our kids have mm -hmm. character, but we're like, can't they learn it through like a Bible study? <laughs> can't I just like <laughs> get them to memorize a like, verse on it or something? TV show or something? Why yeah. does it have to be like grown in them through difficulty? That's just how it works. And us as parents, like we want to, I want to circumvent the difficulty. Absolutely. I want, my, I want my kids to be formed by God, but I'm taking all the sandpaper away. <laughs> like, no, 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 I don't want them to get hurt. Oh, yeah. But that's just not how he works. Exactly it. Oh, that's so hard. So someone who might feel like it takes a lot of bravery to do and talk about the things you're talking about, and they're feeling a little apprehensive about it, because you said God calls us into hard things. If someone's kind of on the precipice of a, a hard season, but they, and they think God's calling them to it, what would you say? Ugh. They're about to say so long normal. What advice? Go for it. <laughs> no, I would say I would say go for it, but uh, I would probably share with it. So on the cover of the book, there's a picture of a girl doing a zip line. That is not me, but they did make me do the zip line. I was going to say, you were scared of the zip line. Yes. And I talk a lot about the zip line in that book because uh, when I first uh, moved to Atlanta for the job that, at the church where I work, mm -hmm. they made me do the zip line. And and I share the story in the book about uh, as I crawled to the top of the, you know, of the big ledge, this big tower. And I know, yeah. I, I don't do heights either. No, 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 me neither. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm shaking, I'm crying, and the, the ropes course wrangler looks at me and he says, like, I can tell you're feeling a little bit of anxiety. <laughs> really? <laughs> Sir, I'm about to have a breakdown. <laughs> you're very perceptive. <laughs> anyway, but, it, he, but what he said to me was, he said, Laura, here's what you need to know. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is acknowledging the fear and taking that step anyway. It's acknowledging the fear and then stepping out anyway. I think those were the last words he said as he <laughs> shoved your body off. He shoved me off the ledge. <laughs> Thank you. That, you had some time to think about it, girl. You screamed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that I, I appreciated it because it's not uh, it's not that I'm living this boldly courageous life all the time. Mm -hmm. I golly, there's so much, there's so much that I'm anxious about mm -hmm. every day. It's just what do I do with that anxiety? Do I yes. allow it to cripple me? Or do every morning I just try to surrender it to the Lord and say, I, you know, God, you know how scared mm -hmm. I am. And some of it is legitimate fear. Yeah. Some of it's irrational fear. I have that going on as well. Uh, but it's amazing how much, you know, the scriptures say, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, present your request before God. Mm -hmm. And the peace of God will, will guard your hearts in Christ Jesus. And it's this promise. It doesn't say present your anxiety before the, present your requests. Don't be anxious, but present them before God, and he'll give you the answers, and the answers will bring peace. He doesn't say that. He says just present mm. it with all your anxieties, all your fears, failures, whatever. And then God, it's his spirit that, it's not the resolution of the problem. Mm -hmm. It's not, like, sometimes that happens. Sometimes God changes things, and, and that's a beautiful story to tell. Mm -hmm. Other times he leaves you in the thick of it. But his presence has you, and it holds you, and it comforts you in that moment. And it brings peace, it which does. is what we ultimately need, but we think we need the answers. Yeah, That's a peace profound. that passes all understanding, a peace that doesn't even make sense. And I'll tell you, it preaches loudly to a world mm -hmm. that needs to know Jesus. When yes. they look at you, like, no, I'm not, happy. I'm not joyful or happy because everything has worked out for me. I'm joyful and happy because I have Jesus mm -hmm. and, and he truly is enough in any hard situation. And that's a reminder why it's so important to fight the battles that we're fighting, asking God to give us that peace, not yes. just for our own selves, but for like the journey that we're walking. Most of the world has zero peace right now. And yeah. most of us have zero peace right yeah. now. So the reminder that it's attainable and the reminder that it's like a daily conversation with God. Like, I'm going to trade you this anxiety. You give me beauty for this. Exactly like, it. let's keep doing this back and forth. Well, and the peace, it's not that we're just saying, oh, everything's fine. It's not like we're sticking our heads in the sand. No. Peace, it, it, it's simply not allowing your circumstances to have the power. Yeah. Or the final word. Yeah. Exactly. And just saying, I can be in the midst of hard circumstances and I still have something within me that keeps me steady and secure. 
no matter what happens. Yeah. And that's really what everybody longs for. It is. And can we talk about, as we're closing, about being tethered to Jesus? You talk yeah. about being untethered is this danger. Mm -hmm. But how do we like tangibly live out what we're talking about? Having that peace, trying to trade our anxiety, yeah. trying to you know live in the not normal. How do you stay tethered to Jesus? Yeah, and I, I give in, in the very last chapter, I give this... Um, just kind of three things. They're not like three magic things. They're just three things that I came up with. Yeah. And one is, you know, having his word as our compass. Like kind of the thing I was talking about earlier about uh, if you allow the news or social media or even the opinions of others to be the loudest voice in your life, yeah. then you're setting yourself up for anxiety. You're setting yourself mm -hmm. up for failure. God's word, he's given it to us as our compass. Mm -hmm. And let that be the loudest voice, you know, Seek him first, you know, yeah. and, and it doesn't have to be like a magic get up in the morning and read your Bible. For me, that's what that's how I do it. Mm -hmm. But in that and that's helpful to frame the whole day. And when other people are saying something different about me or how I should be living than what the Bible says, I, I can check it against what yeah. I know to be true. That's so, so powerful. Compass, you know, as God's word, community. Mm -hmm. Don't be trying to Which do. We haven't had. And we're like, I'm okay on my own. That's a lie. That is not we're true. We're not okay. Even if you if you need to sit out on your lawn and everyone in their lawn chairs ten feet from each other. Oh yeah. You got to be together. Mm -hmm. God's people need each other. We were created to need each other. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, just God is our constant companion. Mm -hmm. Just remembering that every time in Scripture He does say, "Fear not." Don't you know? And we, we've heard that a lot. You know, God tells us, "Don't fear." But what is almost always accompanying that charge to not fear? is he says, I'm with you. He doesn't like say, don't fear. This is all going to make sense in 2022. <laughs> he says, <Wouldn't> that rock. <laughs> <I know. laughs> God, I'm going to explain it in just a little bit. You know. <laughs> but he says, do not fear because I'm with you. Yeah. And his presence, his presence is enough. Mm -hmm. and, and us learning, learning to say, okay, I don't understand it, but I'm just going to trust you. And I'm thankful that I have a God who promises to never leave or forsake me. Mm -hmm. Thank you for inviting us in to this process as God is teaching this to you. Oh, it's a complete walking. mess. <laughs> I'm inviting you in. That's to why a we mess. love it. <laughs> we relate. But I love anyone that's willing to to come alongside and learn the same things because it's really what we're mm -hmm. all doing. We're just being honest about yeah. the ways we struggle and asking God to just to show up in the midst of the mess. Yes, and so as Laura's living out this brave, so long normal life, you can go along the journey with her, and this book is probably the best way to do it. Everything you shared is in here, but a whole lot more, some powerful stories and some powerful ways to tangibly do this, which is what we've talked about. So yeah. you can pick up So Long Normal right now, and you can start living that brave, brave life. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much.